Alright, welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be painting up uh, the Dead Space Marine for Bellacor's base uh, as an exorcist. So this will be cool. I think it'll fit very well considering they, their history with battling demons and how their uh, intro or how they introduce neophytes is to have them be possessed. And if they survive, they can be space marines. If they, they die, they die. Uh, we're going to start by basing him with corn red through the airbrush. You can paint this with a normal brush. Uh, this is just quicker and easier, honestly, in my opinion, with an airbrush. I'm painting the whole uh, marine. I'm not just painting the front of it. I'm not just. I, I left them off the base specifically so I could get the uh, lower areas easier, the recesses, all that. Just because uh, when I had started painting this marine, I had already painted the base, and I did not want to ruin the dry brush finish. Uh, with splotches of corn red everywhere. So this just made it way easier on myself. Now we're going to come in with uh, Wild Rider Red, excuse me. <laughs> uh, we're going to use, and we're going to use this to uh, add our highlights. Um, I'm basing this off of the box art, uh, on the art, he, the way he's laying on the stairs, uh, the tops of the, of the right leg and the right arm uh, look like they are receiving the most light. So we're just going to go over those areas. I'm also going to do a little bit on the head as well as the right side of the chest plate. Maybe it's a little bit on the ab plate. But that's it. That's all we're going to highlight with, with the Wild Rider Red. And this will give us a, a nice uh, transition. From the corn red to the wild red red. Now I'm coming in and I'm going to paint the helmet of Zandri dust. Uh, since this is a sergeant, it's a good idea. Uh, or it's not a good idea. Uh, their helmets are the uh, bone color. So I'm coming in. I'm going to use some thin coats of uh, Zandri dust. And this takes three layers, if I remember correctly. It'll take like two to three, maybe four layers, depending on how much you thin your paint. Now I'm coming in and I am basing all the belts, the, or excuse me, the belt, uh, the pouches, the holster, the hilt for the power sword. I'm going to base all of that with rhinoxide. And I should note I also went and I based all of the rubber joints back with my uh, the Vallejo Black Surface Primer. After that, I'm coming in with Retributor Armor from uh, Citadel, of course. And we're going to be painting the pommel as well as the cross guard for the power sword. Oh, and the little skull ornament on the top of his head. Now I'm coming in with uh, gunmetal from game, uh, Vallejo Game Air. Or, uh, yeah, Vallejo Game Air, excuse me. We're just going to base the whole sword. Um, I did not catch it on camera, but I did come back later with uh, aluminum from Ga Game Air as well uh, as the edge highlight for the sword, or for the blade, excuse me. Um, I don't end up highlighting the cross guard or the pommel. Probably should have, <laughs> but I decided not to. Uh, this miniature took long enough as it was. It, honestly, I, it took longer to paint him than it did to paint Bellacor's body. I'm also going to come in with the gunmetal. I'm going to paint all the piping on the helmet. This next part is a bit of an experiment. I'm um, coming in. This is a skeleton horde straight out of the pot. 
And what I wanted to do was I wanted a recess shade slash panel line for the bone color. And it came out horribly. I should have thinned the paint, or I should have thinned down a contrast paint to almost a wash consistency. Or I should have just used Agrax Earth Shade or Seraphim Sepia. But I didn't. So I ended up giving this really dirty, splotchy look to the bone. And, uh... Thankfully, the next step for this, either way, would have been coming back in with Sandry Dust and relayering on all the raised edges and the flat surfaces. But, yeah, if I were to paint Exorcist again, I would just use Seraphim Sepia or uh, Agrax or Shade. All right, now I'm coming in, and like I said earlier, I'm going to relayer of Xandri Dust on pretty much all the raised edges. I'm not going to, I'm kind of going to kind of feather it out very barely uh, towards the back of the helmet here. I'm just going to leave that little bit exposed just because, uh, honestly, you're not going to see it once it's attached to the rest of the base. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to paint the flats of the helmet on the sides, uh, the raised bits for the ears, for most of the faceplate. Um, I will leave the crease down the center of the helmet uh, on the faceplate. I'm going to leave that the dirty color. Other than that, pretty much the, pretty much the entire helmet, aside from the recesses, gets repainted with this Andrew dust. And it's still, I, I, ended, I do like how it came out. I just still am kicking myself with uh, how I approached this method. It could have been so much better. I should mention, I do do this for the Aquila as well. I do come in. I paint the surface of that center jewel almost. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a skull, like a standard Space Marine, for this uh, lieutenant. Uh... You know, usually on a space screen you have the skull in the center of the Aquila, but this was almost looked like it was a jewel. I don't own any actual space screen lieutenants, so you guys will have to let me know on that. But I'm going to paint just the edges of the wings as well with the sandy dust. Now I'm coming in. This is uh, Thin Down Black Templar. And this is exclusively for a panel lining or for like painting in the battle damage on the armor. Oh, excuse me, uh, I lost the footage. Um, I clear-coated the model with uh, gloss varnish to help reduce the surface tension to let this wash go on easier and just go into the recesses without it sticking to the the uh, to the flat, ed flat surfaces or the uh, highlight areas. And now I'm coming in, uh, the Black Templar didn't really work that well on the helmet, so I'm coming in with uh, Abaddon Black thinned down. They're pretty much the same consistency as something like Nolan Oil, but it's still stronger than uh, Nolan Oil. And I'm just tapping this into the recesses, it'll flow right in. And if you get a little bit of a splotch onto the bone color itself, you can see here I just wipe it off with my thumb. Uh, it's really easy, that's where the gloss coat comes in handy. It makes it much more difficult for the paint to stick to the model. Yeah, this way we can get some more definition on the helmet, which is what I wanted with the skeleton horde. But you know, we don't. I've, I've bitched about that enough already. Now I'm coming in, I'm uh, basing the purity seal. I should have done this before the gloss coat, but I didn't. Uh, that's okay, the paint's still sticking relatively well. It's not too thin. And I'm just using Rakhar Flesh here. Uh, I based the wax seal part uh, with 
Cal Vorback red. And now I'm coming in and I'm hitting the whole model with a matte varnish. And what this is supposed to do is supposed to kind of bring back some of the surface tension. Just a little bit. It'll just make the paint stick to the model a little bit easier than if it was a gloss coat. And this is just so that way I can paint the smoke effects, which I did uh, in the second part of this series. So if you need to watch that, go ahead. Uh, thank you all for watching. This is how it looks on the base. And I will see you all in the next video.